Hey traders, this is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Welcome to this week's session of Becoming a Better Trader, Basics for Building a Strategy. Before we get started, a couple of things. Just want to make sure the uh, technology is a go. You can hear me loud and clear that you can see my screen. If you cannot, then you won't be able to tell me. But it looks like we're all go good. We have the technology. Scott does. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, risk disclaimer. Alrighty. So uh, let's see. Let's. You know what I want to do before I. So I don't forget. This is the link because I said I was going to drop it in here today. Uh, this is I'm going to drop a link in real quick. This is the this is every uh, becoming a better trader webinar we've done uh, all the lessons in one easy link. So you guys can uh, go into that library and have at it. Uh, so there it is. It's in the general chat box. Uh, let's see here now. Let me. Get back on course. Okay. So I don't what we're gonna talk about today is not any one specific strategy, right? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give you guys like a you know the, the quote unquote winning formula or whatever you, know, you want to call it. Uh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about some some building blocks, right? Some things that I think are are good uh to have in your strategy to take into consideration. Give you guys some pointers on on what uh, you know what to to kind of do when you go about building a strategy. You know, I don't really. You know, the thing is, I don't. I mean, I don't want to. I want to. I want to mint here. Uh, I don't really think of so much as my trading is like. Okay, I have the specific strategy, right? I have I have various factors that I take into consideration, right? And then I kind of build a a case, if you will. It's kind of a it's kind of a, a formula, uh, right? It's not so much a, you know, I, when I think of a strategy, I, you know, I, again, not to mince words, I think of kind of like, okay, you have, you know, this signal, that signal, this signal, okay, I'm going to do this, right? And, and as a as a chart uh, chart guy, uh, you know, there's a lot of subjectivity, right? It's, there's there's you know, just as much art as there is science. In fact, I'd say there's probably even more art than science. Uh and there's you know a certain feel to the market stuff like that that you gain only through experience, but anyway, uh, the bottom is is that you know, it, it it's difficult to say okay this is this is the strategy right but there are some core tenets to my trading right that that uh, that need to be there or or or, or can't be there uh, so that's how I think about it when you know when you're looking at you know subjective type of analysis you know unless you're building some kind of quantitative model uh, which then of course involves very precise, uh, math and and uh, instructions basically for your computer to do certain things uh, unless it involves that's this is kind of the approach right so some factors to consider uh, that are very important is to is to look right to determine the trend and and the market type are we are we trending higher are we trending lower sideways volatile not volatile market uh, support and resistance there's a there's a you know there's a thousand different ways uh, probably not a thousand but there's quite a few ways to uh, to measure that right and for those of you who come to my analytical webinars on Tuesday Wednesday Friday you know that I'm a price I'm price uh, type of person, uh, price trend lines. So those are those are just the way that's just the way that I look at it, right? But there's also Fibonacci, there's moving averages, there's all kinds of different kinds of you know support and resistance, price action, entry signal. So I use candlesticks, right? I use candlesticks, um, price action. I also kind of envelope in there patterns. Head and shoulders, wedges, uh, things of that nature, and the candlesticks are more of like my entry per se. Uh, so an entry signal is basically you've got certain factors lining up. What finally gets you in? 
so that's basically what I mean by an, an entry signal. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, it's kind of the final factor. Uh, there's, uh, of course, there's, you know, you can look at sentiment. Uh, I look at sentiment as, you know, a small percentage of what I do. It's kind of off to the side. It's more of a, I don't want to say anecdotal, uh, but it kind of is. Uh, it's more of a, you know, just kind of looking around and seeing what what certain things are happening. Uh, of course, you can incorporate sentiment as a, a large uh, portion of of what you uh, want to use as to determine. You, know, you could use sentiment as a as a trend indicator, for example. You could say, okay, uh, the general sentiment based on my analysis is that there's there's a bullish uh, tone to the market. So that could be, you know, that could actually be a, a trend indicator. Uh, or you could just say I'm only going to trade on this side of, you know, when 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 my analysis says that, you know, there's a, there's bullish, uh, not going to be shorting and uh, fundamental analysis. I I don't, uh, I'm not a fundamental guy, but I do pay attention to reactions to headlines, uh, which in a roundabout way, I guess again, I don't really like to mince words but and 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 i don't really like to you know kind of i guess you could say i do pay attention to fundamentals uh i know some of you probably just fell off your chair by me just saying that but uh what i mean is is that if there's a if there's a downtrend for example and you got a bullish price action uh out of a, a negative headline then maybe you know there's there's that trend is saturated right now, I don't really care about the specifics. I just care about the reaction. So, uh, but you know, maybe you have something in there in your in your uh, in your analysis that you like to include that's fundamentally oriented. Short-term trading is generally is a is a heavy heavily technically driven. Uh, you have to you have to know what levels you're going to get in and get out at. Uh, you know, it, it, to, and you have to use stuff like you know support and resistance of some kind uh, to determine risk and whatnot. Uh, that's not information. You know, I was thinking about it when you, know, you look, look at some of the, the you know, look like Paul Tudor Jones, who is one of the, the great macro guys of all time, or even George Soros, but Paul Tudor Jones more, even more so, uh, was quite, quite technically driven. He, he'd have a fundamental thesis. But he used the the charts to be able to maneuver himself around his thesis, so to speak, right? So, and and in fact, once he was pressed on uh, the question fundamentals or technicals, uh, if if he had if he only had one, right, to be able to use, he actually chose technicals, which was quite interesting. And and I think that has a lot to do with his trading uh, as a as a guy who started in the in the, the Chicago pits uh, trading uh, futures. Uh, which, you know, again, it, it goes to highlight that the shorter term stuff is, you know, you've got to have a lot of, it's got to be primarily technical. Uh, the, you get longer term, fundamentals become a little more impactful, right? Uh, risk management and exit strategy. You know, again, I, I bolded the stuff that I, you know, I pay attention to the most. But again, this doesn't mean it has to be yours. As someone just said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I, I don't know why we'd want to skin a cat. I've used the expression before, uh, Scott. Uh, there's a th there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of ways to skin a cat, and that's pretty gross. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, that's that's exactly right. You know, there's there is a, a lot of ways, uh, a lot of things, right? And there's not necessarily a right or a wrong. So, I, what I want you to guys to do as we go through this this webinar is. Uh, what I want you guys to do is is keep an open mind, right? Understand that the stuff that I'm telling you uh, is not the it's not the gospel. I'm not giving you a specific strategy. I'm not doing that uh, simply because I want you guys to think. Because uh, what I do and what you want to do are going to be likely going to be different, or maybe they have some similarities. But you know, there's not I, I, there's very few people who have like almost identical strategies. They're kind of like fingerprints. Uh, and how they approach the market, you know, and and uh, and how they go about executing their ideas. Two people look at the same situation and they come up with the same conclusion. It doesn't mean they execute it the same way, right? There's there's different ways to go about implementing that plan, uh, and that's where a lot of times the the 
the divergence happens between one individual and another is they'll have similar analysis, like very similar, but and same the same exact conclusion, right? There's not that many conclusions you can draw. Uh, you're either you know, bullish, bearish, or neutral, uh, right, to varying degrees. And it, it's, you could, you know, so you get two traders, both bullish for the same reasons, but one will go about trading it in a much different fashion than the other. And both of them could have, you know, outcomes, right? But they didn't, they didn't arrive at that outcome and down the same path. So I want you guys to just have an open mind. Um, so thinking of a strategy as a formula, right? This is just, I'm, and, and of course, I'm, I'm going to heavily focus on the stuff that I do because it's what I know. Uh, but I'm certainly also going to, you know, I encourage you to, to substitute things. Uh, if, if it's something that, that you, like one that we're going to talk about is Fibonacci. Fibonacci comes up all the time. Everybody's like, well, you know, Fibonacci, Fibonacci, Fibonacci. Question comes up, why don't you use it? We'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, and I'm not going to discourage anybody from using Fibonacci. I know too many people who use it successfully. Which will beg the question, well, then why don't you use it? You know, but, you know, why don't I have things? Why don't you do a lot of things? You know what I mean? So I, that's, again, you got to keep that open mind. But um, so there's, you know, this is, so the stuff that I'm going to talk about, of course, is you know going to be heavily related to what I do. Uh, again, it doesn't mean it's what you have to do. If you want to use it as a starting template, that's fine. Uh, you know, that's, that's how I, that's how you learn, right? As you, as you, you go around to come to webinars like this and you read books and you, you, you look at, uh, you know, uh, blogs, you look at daily FX, you know, and, and you see what other people are doing on there and you kind of get an idea. And, and you know, a lot of times something will kind of stick with you. Uh, you know, maybe an idea here, an idea there, and all of a sudden you've got yourself, uh, at least starting to formulate something, right? But you can also use uh, you can also use the very things that you, you into a trade to also keep you out of a trade, and uh, you know it's a good question, David. And I've had that asked before. Well, can I share the slides? Uh, I'm not going to be able to share these slides. I, I I have inquired but not pressed upon um, how I could go about doing that. Uh, this is being recorded. I did hit the record button. I'm double checking now. So I know it's not the slides, um, but the the recording will be there. And if you really wanted to, to it's a little painstaking, uh, especially how slow I'm going so far. Uh, but you could go through and, and you could kind of, you could, because there's not that many, you could actually uh, clip the, the, take a screenshot and, and make your own slides. I don't mean to, you know, make you go through all that extra work. Uh, in the future, I'm going to try to find a way to do that so that you guys, I can maybe get you guys a file or something. Um, but you're also getting back to this. I just wanted to kind of fill on that because that has been a question in the past. Uh, oh, I don't know if there's a if there's a spot on the go to Al that you can take a, but you could use the snipping tool. So there's a snipping tool uh, in in Microsoft, uh, or you can Google that on how to use. Um, you can also use the above the term and not what to do, right? So we'll, we'll kind of go through and I'm going to put in each one of these and put like kind of what, you know, ideas of what not to do because what not to do is also part of trading, right? When you, when you, that's part of why we have rules, right? That's why we come up with a strategy is to keep us from doing things we shouldn't do. So sometimes, you know, you don't necessarily get into a trade because of something, but it can keep you out of a trade, you know? So it's very important to remember. Uh, trend determination market type. We're going to look at a couple of charts here uh, in, in a little bit. So don't get too antsy. Uh, it's not entirely a slideshow. Um, yeah, it really is the market trending higher, lower, sideways, right? There's, there's, you know, I mean, we could just look at like, I mean, me, I don't really use anything anymore. You guys are going to see some stuff on here that I don't normally use for those you've been with me, like the moving averages. So if I were to take these and I were to re remove, apparently, apparently that doesn't uh, work. I, I actually, there's a, there's supposed to be, and I feel like some things have changed. Um, I was looking for how to 
how to actually go through and hide the individual uh, things. And I, I used to know where it was, but for some reason I don't uh, seem to have it. I did a couple of things earlier um, that that screwed up my charts right before we came on, and I actually had to go through quickly and, and reformat them. Uh, some new feature in, in, in TradingView. Uh, so at, at any rate, uh, you know, looking at this, I don't, you know, this is Aussie Kiwi. I don't really, I don't need a moving average to tell me that's going down. But like, if you look at this, this is a three month moving average, for example, it's going down, right? So, you know, that's where I, that's where, for those of you who follow me, you know, it's, it's like this, you know, it's, it's pretty basic. The only one I have on there is a 200 day, but it's pretty basic, right? It's, there's not, there's not moving averages. Uh, and there's no, you know, there's no, indicators and whatnot uh but in this situation right here i don't need a moving average to tell me which way it's going you know the euro generally speaking uh you know is going uh lower right so you know looking at the trend uh it's been a lot choppier lately right this has been very choppy so that's that's part of uh you know understanding your your market environment it's been very choppy so in that situation i know that that moves that happen higher and lower uh, are not likely to last, right? So it's, you know, part of my you know, strategy per se is that identifying that market condition and saying, okay, uh, obviously buying breakouts and shorting breakdowns, right? Momentum trading is not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be a, a very profitable way to go about things until market conditions change. Uh, and I mean, there's, there's different things you can use to, to identify that. I'm not a big proponent of indicators, but I don't, I don't necessarily discourage them. Uh, you know, there's there's various ones uh, that, that you can use. I mean, moving averages, you know, whenever I look at a trend, the reason I don't have moving averages up there is I don't use them as support and resistance, and I can pretty much tell which way the trend is going, right? It's either going up or down or sideways. So I don't really need a moving average to tell me that, so I just kind of keep it off the chart. That's my personal. But if it makes you feel better to be able to be like, okay, you know what, for example, if if you wanted to look at this and say, okay, you know what? I and I've thrown a couple up here. Uh, I've got, let's say I have, you know, I don't know. Let's do this. Let's say a one month, and then I have here the three month. Right. Let's just make this a different color so you guys are not all like. There we go. Oh, right, that's nice and nice and pronounced. <laughs> uh, and you say, you know what? I only want to trade when the shorter term moving average. And you could use this on a four hour. You could, you know, with different inputs, you could use it on, you know, different time frames. I'm just going to use it daily to keep it simple. Uh, you could say, you know what? I'm only going to be, you know, shorting when it's when when the shorter term moving average is below the longer term, because then I know that at least that you know it's more likely trending lower than, and it's obviously not trending higher at that point, right? Uh, and so I'm only going to short situations like that. You say, okay, you know what, when it's above, I'm only going to look to, to buy. Uh, you know, I mean, again, do you, do you necessarily need that to know that this is going up? No. Uh, but you know, you could use it as a, as a, if you'd like. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, simple stuff like that, you know, I have no problem with somebody saying, you know, moving averages to, to determine, you know, trend and 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 look uh, across the board you know I have no problem with somebody saying that because I mean you're really kind of measuring the same thing that I'm looking at right it's, it, which is the price I mean uh, moving average correspond to the price and and uh, so you if you have a, a situation where you have higher highs and higher lows then you have a trending market and most likely your moving averages that you're looking at unless they're very very short term uh, are also corresponding to that right lower lows lower highs so you know it, it, it's important though to understand which way the market's moving right and to and to say you know what uh for example maybe i will only trade with the trend you know and and that but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a trend trader there are uh there are plenty of uh strategies that entail going against the trend and taking those counter trend moves when they get to extremes 
right? Uh, but still, the bottom line is, is you want to, you know, be able to say, okay, it's it's trending lower. Uh, my strategy is to is to short rallies, uh, you know. So I will only, you know, I will only trade with the trend in that case, right? I will only short. Uh, I won't look to buy. And so that can, at the very least, you know, if you say that and that's one of your rules, part of your strategy is that you won't break that one, right? And so that therefore you won't find yourself. Uh, getting on the other side of, of a trend if that's in case not the way that you trade. Now, if you trade extremes, um, if you trade extremes, then you know, you're know you going to be looking at situations where maybe the market's trending lower and you're going to be looking for those where it's deeply oversold or it's trending higher and it's deeply overbought and you want to short it, right? Uh, then obviously you're going to be looking to take the other side of trends at saturation points, in which case you'll be using some other factors to determine when that would be, right? Which is what this is all about. It's, it's a, you know, using multiple factors to come out to a, a logical conclusion. Um, Ty, I don't, I mean, I, again, I, I don't use moving averages because of a, I look at the trend based on uh, higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, lower highs. And number two, I don't use them as support and resistance. I always use price or some type of trend line or slope. Um, I have that 200 day up there only because, you know, interesting things do happen around the 200 day because of how much it's watched. Uh, but, you know, the ones I just showed you, like, that's like the one month over the three month, you know, I mean, that, that's a logical uh, combination. Um, you know, again, it kind of shows you the same thing that I'm I'm looking at there, though. So, there, and that's the case with a lot of things. You know, again, this is where one trader could say, you know what, I'm only looking at this, and trader number two says I'm only looking at this, and trader number one and trader number two could both agree, right? And, uh, you know, there's other indicators. I'm not, you know, I'm uh, again, I don't use these, so I'm not going to really go through them because my familiarity is somewhat lacking. Uh, and I, I do under, I do know what these are, but I, I you know, I'm not going to go into detail on them. Uh, I, I think these are, you know, I, I don't know. I, I kind of think they're a little unnecessary. But, I mean, a MACD does involve uh, moving averages, so it's a little more complicated way of, I guess, uh, looking at them. Uh, I have Elliott wave principle on here because because it, it does involve trends. It is, it is the sequence of trends. It is a little more, uh, uh, it is more of a complicated form of analysis. So I always recommend anyone who wants to get into Elliott wave uh, to first master the basics of uh, technical analysis and, and, and price action and then move on to something like Elliott wave. I do have a very light Elliott wave uh, background. Uh, I find that it's not so much pronounced in that I will actually say, okay, you know what, this is a ABC or, a, you know, it's a it's a five-wave bull market or bear market. But when something like clear pops up, I do find myself a lot of times, uh, if I would to go back and look at, you know what, I, I did put the C, uh, the C corrective uh, pattern, right, or something like that, um, the ABC corrective pattern. Uh, but, you know, again, you could have Elliott Wave as being one of your uh, trend determinations and and de determining whether you know what part of the trend we're in. Um, so then so then you have trend right, and you know uh, market conditions whether it's trading you know higher lower sideways, uh, then support and resistance right. It's another very logical input uh, that's unrelated uh, to trend right, and generally confluence leads to uh, generally, confluence leads to a a stronger signal. Uh, so, when I when I say that, I mean you know what I mean by that is you have two different types of support and resistance that are coming together, right? So that's that's something that's you know oftentimes makes that area or level uh, more important. You know these are the two that I focus on. A lot of people use Fibonacci's. You, you include uh, you know, a moving out there. Maybe you find that, you know, you have confluence. Several of these, I've oftentimes found that, you know, you only need a couple. Uh, you don't need to have, like, we don't have a bunch of different things coming together at once. And what I've also found is that, you know, it's it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, it's like sufficient to have, you know, just two, right? It's sufficient. And what I oftentimes find, and people ask me, 
pull out 102s, Fibonacci's. Because a lot of times the same levels that I'm looking at, right, or the same things I'm looking at also have a Fibonacci around that area. Now, maybe it's because it's Fibonacci. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's because it's it's the <laughs> the levels that I'm just looking at and the way that I'm drawing my trend lines and whatnot. I don't know. But a lot of times, you know, I'll compare charts with someone and they'll and I'll be like, yeah, you know, I think it's a good spot because of like, you know, the support level, this trend line, whatever. And they'll be like, oh yeah, and the fifty the fifty percent retracement's right there, or or the sixty one point eight is right there, or the thirty eight point two. And I'll say, yeah, sure, you know, like that. Yeah, that's that's I guess that is right in there. Um, and so that makes it, you know, that, but like we re, we arrived at the same conclusion and one of them that I just realized, uh, was gold. And if you look here, you know, you get, you look at this gold chart, right? And here's basically, this is, so I used 21 as a one month. So what you had here was you had this trend line, which I was looking at, uh, and I actually had a support level from zone from back here, for those of you who recall, uh, right in there. So so I was looking at these two things, right? I was looking at these two things. I was looking at the trend line, and I was looking at this zone that we had over here. Now, what also happened running up through there, the one-month average, and if you want to take the, if you want to take a pullback, right, from the, this here, you also it came very near the 50% retracement. It all all lined up in the same area. That's why I say like there's a lot of times, and 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 that's where I don't really view it as being like oh wow I've got like these like four or five things now in the same area. That's why I say usually two things because there's a lot of correspondence between this stuff, um, which I think is is you know it's it's, it's a somewhat fascinating aspect to the market. Um, right here, you know, one could say you've got this, you got the 21 day, you've got the, uh, 61.8 coming through right there on the close. You know, we're hanging out 61.8 trend line, 21 day, right now. And you could also even, you know, you could even say that, uh, this reversal day high, which was 1817, this was 1717. You know, there, there's different things you could have been looking at there, but I, I was really uh, just looking at the trend line, right? But now you got, you know, you could say, oh, the moving average is in there, and oh, you know what, the Fibonacci is in there. So, it, it, and, and then all of them are, you know, valid ways of looking at it, right? So, I take a, a stripped down, simple approach to that, and I find that a lot of times they line up anyway. So, I guess for me, maybe seeing is believing. Maybe you're like, you know what, Paul? Um, I actually want to see all that stuff. And then maybe after a while you say, I don't really need to see all that stuff. And you'll kind of get, get away from some of that stuff or maybe you'll just keep them in there. I don't know. I don't care. Whatever works for you. Um, do I know what Fibonacci is? Yeah. Well, it's a mathematical sequence. And it's kind of like the, the way nature, uh, you know, it's the, there's, there's Fibonacci like spirals and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, and there's different, uh, sequences in, in nature. I mean, I, I, I know that Fibonacci was a mathematician and, you know, he found this stuff and, uh, and, and found that it's kind of like, it's kind of like nature's math. So the idea is that it's also going to occur on the markets. And, and since we're dealing with human beings, you know, there is a, there is a, like a philosophical reasoning there as to why it, it, it would work. Um, but again, I, and I, and and that doesn't, that's, that, that actually isn't why I don't use it. It's more about uh, keeping the charts clean. I've just I'm been a really I'm a really big proponent of price because price at the end of the day is the ultimate like that's actually where there was buying and selling. So, and again, I, I find Fibonacci to line up a lot of times with that. So it it doesn't you know it it it, it never surprises me when it does. Uh, and I guess what would surprise me is if if it didn't because it seems to work for a lot of people, right? it's it's something that a lot of people like to include so it's uh it's just kind of a it's just kind of a you know it's cleaning up things taking off things that i don't really feel like i need on there and and but again you know you may you might be like you know what and i don't and i don't really use pitchforks i, I have pitchforks up here um i use slopes but i don't actually use the pitchforks but i know people and 
I have a couple of good friends who are very big proponents of pitchforks and they use them successfully, right? So, and some of you guys know one of them. It would be uh, Michael Boutros, right? He, he's, a, he's a pitchfork guy. Um, so anyways, you know, I use more of a slope. What I mean by a slope, it's it's taking, uh, you know, taking the the parallel of a say a trend line and then running it through other various price levels, which is similar to a pitchfork but not the same. Uh, but anyways, those are that's those are things I focus on. Again, you may put more emphasis on you know Fibonacci. You may do Fibonacci on several time frames. Look for confluence between that. You may look for confluence between. Um, price levels on the, the daily and the four hour, right? Different ways, whole bunch of different ways. But the point is, is that, you know, it's a good idea to have something that determines the trend, something with support and resistance. So now you have two different things, right? Two different components of two different ways of looking at the market. What I mean by this, uh, don't buy resistance or short support. <laughs> I draw elegant pictures. <laughs> uh, I, I like. I have a lot of scenarios. Actually, I'm going to show you guys one, and it, posting. It'll be on the website too. It's with the euro. I have three different uh, outcomes. <laughs> Two of them bearish. One of them bullish. Two of them I'll take. One of them I won't. Anyways, we'll look at that in a little bit. Uh, won't buy resistance or short support. What I mean by that is is that. I, I won't buy resistance or short support. <laughs> it's really, it, it really means like, I'll just go back and show you as an example. I don't mean to be, to sound sarcastic or anything. Uh, it means that like in this gold here, when it was pulling back, I, I may not necessarily turn bullish, right? Let's say in this situation, I said, you know what? I don't want to buy this thing. But I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to short it right here. Why? Because it's at support. As I have it measured, it's at support. And so that's one of those where we talked about it before. I'm not going to do something against my, I'm not going to go against my philosophy. I'm not going to go against my my outlook, right? It's, it's trending higher. We have the trend component that we were talking about before. We have support. I'm not going to short it, right? I may not buy it, but I'm not going to short it for sure. So that's like, and, and, and if I had shorted it there, I'd have been breaking a rule and I would have gotten, uh, I would have had a loss unless I was stubbornly sticking through it and then gold ends up going lower and then which case, you know, really just kind of being undisciplined. So uh, I'm not going to short it, right? And at the very least, I'm not going to have a losing trade, right? So what happens is, and the reason why, you know, it sounds like obvious, right? It's like, oh, well, why would you, why would you short support, you know? Because the day before you had a nasty candlestick and you might think to yourself, which I started to think, oh, there's a chance that it support, there's a chance, it's a scenario. It could hold, it could break. I'm not going to anticipate that break though. I'm not going to get short because I think it's going to break, right? Because it didn't break. So it's kind of like trust until broken, right? Trust until broken. So this is to me a simple rule of thumb that keeps me out of, a lot of bad situations, right? Simple rule of, of, of thumbs can keep you, can really make a huge difference. If you stick to them though, I can't make you stick to them. That's up to you. Um, <laughs> Scott, you're not spam today. It's all right. You're, you're allowed to open comment. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no limit. Although there, there was a, there was a spammer on here once. And literally doing 50 to 100 posts during the webinar, and it was just like of the craziest stuff ever, uh, like just like incredibly random. Um, anyways, they don't seem to be in here today, which is good. Good for all of us. It's distracting. Uh, okay, so so yeah, so that's 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 what I mean by that. Rules of thumb, guys. Think of that. It's it's uh it's my opinion on the S and P 500 and Nasdaq. I should have put the disclaimer in here for you, for those of you who haven't been here. I'm not going to comment on uh, I'm not going to comment on on market directions and whatnot unless it's related to 
uh, this particular topic. But if you bring that question tomorrow, I will certainly do that in the analytical webinar. Um, but the rule of thumbs will really will really help you a lot. You know, even if it's not like I have this really defined strategy, right? That's okay. Um, but if you follow these rules of thumb, you say, well, I'm not going to do this. I will do this. I won't do that. I will do this. And don't have like a thousand of them. Just have some basic ones. You're going to find that life is going to get a lot easier for you. If you say, I'm most comfortable trading with the trend. Some people are more comfortable fading really big moves. They're just more comfortable doing that. And some people are more comfortable trading with the trend. It's fine. Both of them can, can make money. Uh, stick to the one that you're comfortable with, right? And say, okay, I'm going to avoid those those painful situations that make me uncomfortable. Even though you know, the the tendency is is to is to think that somebody does something and then therefore I should do it. You know, that's in the beginning. That's a lot of times what people think. Uh, when, even if you've been doing this for a while and then you like you you go through a bad run, you start to think. Well, you start to second guess yourself and you start to think change things. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to do what's most comfortable with you. Use those rule of thumbs, right? Whatever it is. If it's, you know, I will only trade under these certain conditions because I've found to be most comfortable and have the most success. Right? And the opposite would be not to do that when it's the other way around, right? When, it, it, like, if you're a trend trader, I only, you know, trade in bullish and bearish trends. And if you get the, and it, and if you get the analysis wrong on the trend. That well, that's you know, that's just part of life. I mean, it that that's just you know, it is what it is. But at least you're at least you're giving yourself a, a chance by being consistent and only doing you know certain things and not doing other things. What gets you into a trade, right? Price action patterns, entry signals. I use candlesticks. So somebody asked earlier. Question was, well, how do you how do you trade? Uh, how do I trade pullbacks? I guess we'll use. Um, We'll use like Aussie Kiwi as an example. Could use gold. The gold, the gold trade. So you had this bearish bar, and then you had the bullish bar after it. Uh, the the bounce off of support. So you know, at least it showed you then that there was buyers, and so this was this to me was, you know, like okay, you know what, this thing's been consolidating, pullback support. It did have the bearish bar before it, but it's just one day, right? Now it bounced off of it. At least now it's showing that there is some kind of kind of support off of that. But the one that I was that you know got a little bit more excited about, and we'll see if it works, uh, is the double double reversals in Aussie Kiwi, right? So we had resistance broke through support, old support becomes new resistance. Had another uh, trend line here that came down, you know, to that as well. If you wanted to say, oh, the moving average is through there too, and then you got a downtrend, you know, you've got several factors. But anyways. Um, this was a this was a pretty good uh, rejection, uh, and then you had another one after it, and so you know as long as it stays below this high here, you know I like it, um, and that's this is price action here showing you you've got a couple of different uh, you got a couple of reversals uh, that took shape uh, that were you know obviously there was a lot of selling going on. In these two situations so that's a price action signal um, you know there was another one I, I kind of circled here from a while ago since we're looking at the same chart it had a, a break of a head and shoulders had a, uh, a reversal bar uh, you know even even if it's not some kind of major nasty reversal I like to see at least you know something go in my my favor you know, for example, if you want to go back here, you had a down move, you had an up move, up move, up move, then you had a strong down move, right? That's that's indication that there's there's sellers that came in and that momentum maybe wants to resume to the downside, in which case it did in this particular instance, right? So that's that's what I use as as price action in terms of candlesticks like reversals, engulfing. Um, I wait for that counter trend move to end with something like that. Right. That's generally that's generally how I I look at these things. And once they they put in some kind of uh, candlestick formation, if the setup is there, the trend, the the support resistance, 
then this is the, you know, at least gives it a fighting chance because it shows that momentum is going back the other way. Now, some people don't wait for that. They'll just be like, you know what, I'm just going to short support or short the resistance area. And that's fine too, you know, and, and um, I like to wait for that, that kind of confirmation, if you will. So uh, price patterns, you know, if there's price patterns you're using head and shoulders, triangles, wedges, uh, bull bear flags, you know, those are also things that you can incorporate that don't necessarily involve uh, these prior two things. Uh, so you've got, you know, trend, you've got levels, and then you've got price action, right? Those are, those are all varying uh, things that right here, I have a rule that I only trade when I get a confirmation signal, meaning I'm not going to, you know, if we go back and look at, uh, like say gold, you know, I, I, I know traders will buy, say, uh, they'll buy like right near this trend line and then they'll put their stop down here. And I, that's not something I would do. I wait for it to bounce. Right. But that doesn't mean that buying down here, putting a stop and then saying, you know what, if it bounces off here, I have a really like, you know, really tight position. And then once it, once it closes, you know, then maybe I'll add to it. And you could do something like that. Um, I tend to just wait for the, the actual, uh, confirmation. And, and then that in this case, uh, you know, would wait for the close. And, and so one trader might get like, say, you know, I get like 1304, the next one might get like 1312 prices. Right. Uh, you know, in, in that situation, but then the next time maybe, maybe, you know, it breaks support and, and, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't work out there. Uh, but at least have the stop in, you know, down below. So, you know, there's two, two different ways to do it. Um, generally I wait for the close of, you know, a candlestick like this, not, not very often unless there's, unless there's like some kind of wicked reversal. Um, now I will say that the Aussie Kiwi trade, you know, for example, we've got these reversals and I, and I, I'm looking at putting another position on, on this retracement here as it gets closer right? It's back up to the trend line. It's getting closer. So it's a risk reward game too, getting good prices, right? Getting good prices in that instance, but there's a lot of different ways to do that, you know? So, you, but the point is you have to have some type of for doing that, right? You have, uh, you have to say, okay, you know, in this situation, this is what I will do. In this situation, this is what I will do. Um, uh, now I also included Elliott wave in here because you could be using Elliott wave for, uh, price patterns, they, there are also, uh, head and shoulders and, uh, you know, you've got triangles of, you know, like a fourth wave triangle or something, you know, that could also be something that you're, you know, you look at, um, and head and shoulders, actually, it's not part of Elliott wave, but it does, there are, uh, there is a component to it. It involves, uh, it involves the, the final leg of like, say a bull move and then also the ABC correction, right? Um, okay, so oh, the moving averages, uh, Al. Those, you know, again, those are the ones that I have up there are, are the one and three month. But it doesn't. More people actually use like they use like a twenty-one and a fifty or something, or like I, I, I like logical numbers. Like I, that's one, the one hang up I have with the 200 day is it's really, the only reason I look at it is because it's, it's so widely watched to me, a one year makes more sense, but the 200 day, for some reason, I don't know how, how it ever came about. The 10 months was determined as being uh, important. Just like I actually don't really understand why a 14 period RSI, uh, why the number 14 and then it gets used on daily, it gets used on hourly, it gets used on like what's 14 hours, what's 14 days, what's, you know, 14 five minute bars. I don't know. Um, the, the, but the key is, is whatever you use to be consistent. Don't be like changing it all the time. Uh, sentiment. So maybe you want to use sentiment in there, right? You could use, uh, the daily FX, the, uh, the IG ratios. Uh, you know, generally it's considered a contrarian indicator, right? Uh, so if, if there's a lot, a large number of traders that are long, then, you know, you'd want to be looking to, to go the other way. As I said before, I don't really put a lot of emphasis on this stuff when stuff catches my eye. Uh, so I'm not going to go into great detail on this. The COT report, large futures trading activity, 
uh, large futures traders activity. Uh, that's something that, you know, obviously it's longer term because it only comes out once a week. Right. And, uh, it's, it's not something that I, I, I look at it when there like becomes some, something really kind of pops off the screen in there. Um, once in a while you get something that's very, uh, kind of intriguing, uh, in terms of how the shuffling goes on, uh, surveys, you know, I'm not really going to go into that too much, but there's, you know, there's like, uh, the DSI, which is a futures indicator daily sentiment index, which is basically a, you know, it's kind of, a, I believe it's a, it's, you know, it's, it's just a survey of, uh, futures market, futures market participants, uh, and then other, you know, I mean, other could be, other could literally be like watching your Twitter feed and seeing like everybody's like, you know, <laughs> everybody's like hating on, on, you know, the stock market or, or hating on, you know, a currency or loving something. And, and, uh, you know, it's kind of an anecdotal, you're just like, Oh wow. It seems like everybody. And then, and then you, you know, again, it's a secondary tool. Um, the way that I look at it, it's not primary. And so, you know, it might be like one of those things that's kind of like the little, you know, it's a little cherry on the top. It's like, Oh, you know what? I also feel like everybody's kind of leaning short this thing and, and it, it has a reversal pattern. And so that, that maybe helps, uh, solidify the case, but you know, not a, not a big, uh, it's not like a, a primary, comp but it could be something that, you know, and again, the weightings of, of what you have in your strategy, uh, what's important and what's not important will vary from one trader to the next. Right. So you may have like, you know, maybe support and resistance, like 70% of what you do and trend is, you know, like 20% and then like 10% is, you know, a mix of stuff. You know, it could, there could be varying uh, ratios as to what is your primary focus. Fundamental analysis. I look at macro trends, reaction to news. Uh, that's generally my, you know, a, a take on it. Uh, you know, general, general direction of data and news flow points to macro trends. So, you know, you get kind of a, right, like right now we don't really have the, the Euro is, is going nowhere because the theme is not really like, it's not obvious. That's, that's why the volatility is so low. That's why, that's what that means basically. So I don't really, you know, if you ask, if you ask someone what's going to make the Euro move, you know, a thousand points, which volatility in the past when it's gotten to these levels has uh, indicated that it can get a 10, 20% move. Uh, what's going to make it move 10 to 20%? I don't know. I don't really, nobody really knows. That's why volatility has gotten so low and it's gotten so choppy because everybody's kind of like trying to figure it out. Somebody will be right. Um, but, you know, become obvious, uh, which is, it's, it's actually most unclear that it been just me looking at volatility and, and the range. It's the most unclear it's been in a long time. And the reason for that is because people don't really know where it's going. Um, but it, once it starts to break out, you know, or, and go one way or another, things will start to, to kind of make a little bit more sense as things go along. And of course, once the trend becomes really obvious, then everybody will know. <laughs> By then it'll be too late to make money, I suppose. Uh, so I look at the reactions, the news, you know, maybe I think it's a, I think it's a good thing for even a technical trader to watch various reactions, um, how, how they play out. You know, I, I like looking at, you know, if you're in a downtrend, do you have like bad news, uh, that everybody's like, you know, you look around and it's like, Oh wow, that, you know, that was a, that was like pretty bad. Like everybody agrees that it's bad, but then the market rallies. It's a sign that, that, you know, that there, it takes more to push the market lower now, uh, that that's, that, 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 that might be priced in, um, and same thing on a, on a good news. And I actually, this goes all the way back to like my stock trading days because of earnings, you would have stocks that would, uh, you know, they'd be trending higher for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then earnings would come out, they would gap up on positive earnings and then they start selling off that was a sign of an exhaustion, right? Or the same thing on the downside, stock would be trending lower. Same thing happens in, in you know, in currencies and whatnot. Something will be trending lower, trending higher, and then a news event will come out and then that'll be it, right? And then you'll have a, a turnaround. So it's it's something that, you know, you can pay attention to. Uh, again, it's, it's you know, it's kind of like sentiment. It's off to the side. Uh, I actually think this can be uh, 
this can be sometimes really, really helpful uh, is to see the, those differing signs. And it takes a little experience to, to look at. But anyways, it could be some other stuff, right? You could be you could be looking at, you know, you could be, you know, I don't even know because I don't, again, I don't, uh, this is the only lens that I look at fundamentals through. It could be something else, uh, but, you know, that you'll be using confluence with some of this other stuff, right? And that's the idea is, is to have confluence between your your different forms of analysis. Uh, you don't want to have all this, you don't want to have stuff that all says the same thing. Risk management and exit strategy. You've got you've to have good risk reward. So even if you have a setup, um, your risk reward needs to be uh, sufficient. Uh, in order to make money over the long run, otherwise you got to be right all the time. Being right all the time is harder, is, is hard to do in the market. Uh, as we talked about not long ago, losing uh, is something that you guys need to get used to doing because trading is a lot about losing. Uh, you're you're a loser all the time, and and you got to learn how to be a good loser. Uh, and and risk reward, having good risk reward ratios makes the losing a lot easier. You know, I always feel good when when I when I take several small losses uh, over you know a span of time, and then I have a couple of a couple of winners, and all of a sudden like it's wiped out, and then some. It feels pretty good, you know, because it, it it it's that's you know that means that you did your job on the downside, and now you're doing your job on the upside too with with managing risk. And as we've talked about, uh, risk management is is the most important. Uh, is is the most important basic aspect that you got to have in your trading because it's it's what will allow you to stick around and make a lot of other mistakes that, that you can fix. But you know if you break risk management rules and you blow out your account, then you don't have anything to fix. So that's that's really why this is very important. But on an individual trade by trade, not just looking at your overall account, um, you know you, there's different strategies for getting in and out. You know you can scale in. Uh, whether that be scaling in, you know, against, uh, you know, you could be buying like a, an uptrend, you get a down a pullback and you could say, okay, you know what, I'm going to buy these support levels with my maximum stop loss. Uh, you could be scaling in on the way up, right? Uh, you know, and then also scaling out of position, you know, how many, some, some traders will scale out 10, 12, 13 different times, right? Just kind of little by little by little by little by little. Um, I have a little bit more of a, a narrowed approach where it might be anywhere from two to, you know, kind of a maximum of five, but usually two or three, you know, exits on a winning trade. Uh, obviously on a stop, you know, and once it hits its full stop, you know, get out of all of it. But, uh, you know, are you going to use trailing stops? When are you going to use trailing stops? Trailing can be a little tricky. Um, you know, trailing stops are, are one of those kind of question marks that, I could probably go into that uh, quite a bit, uh, to be honest. It's, there, there is a, there is a little bit of, uh, there's some leeway as to how to, to implement a trailing stop. One of the strategies that I like, uh, and one of the strategies I like, we'll just use this chart. This is fine. Um, I'm just trying to look for a good example. So one of the strategies I like is is to use the uh, the higher low, depending on which direction the trade is in, the higher low of the previous uh, bar. So let's just say, and this was actually a trade that I did take, and so I, I was like, I was just gonna say, let's just say we took this trade, but I did take this trade. Let's say that you're short from here, right? There was actually two different uh, entries, but so from from here. Right. So now what I would do is and my target was my target was down here, uh, but I did have an initial uh, target that was right around here. All right. My initial target was right around here. It was around this level. Um, so what happened here was so initial and then I had a target and then eventually we broke the. The, the trend line but one of the the ways that I like to look at this is a stop through the high um, a stop through the high or low so in this case you'd be short you would not want to what I would do is I would get out on a closing bar above 
the first, okay, so it would be a closing bar above the last bearish bar. So the, the black bars are bearish, right? And so in this situation, let's say right now it hits it hits there, right? It, it hits support. So it would need to close above there, not not trade above there, but actually like fully close. Well, we had an update. We had another update that actually slightly went above it. Uh, then you had a bearish day. Then obviously this didn't close above it. This didn't close above it. Didn't close above it. This one actually traded above, right? But it did not close above. Uh, you did not get a close above this high. You did not get a close above this high, right? You finally did. Uh, actually, it was not even until over here. You had you had this bearish bar here, right? You had this this little march higher here, and then you had a high, a high, a close right at the high. You actually didn't get one until you got over here, right? So with that said, uh, when I say a bearish bar, I mean like the the most like, and, and this is where it gets subjective. This was actually above there, but this was to me like a bearish bar. This was a neutral bar. So it's it, this is why I say it's a little gray area because because you could you could say okay well that was a down die right and it was a down die but it wasn't it wasn't really a bearish day uh, and again what what constitutes a bearish day right uh, I, I just know that I was looking at this thing and I was thinking to myself well that's not really a bearish day this is a bearish day now I wasn't I had very little at this point because we'd already hit the longer term target but you did not get a really powerful uh, up move until you got over here. And it wasn't until you got over here that you had really like kind of cleared out everything. Uh, now this one it was a little, uh, again, it's a little tricky because you did have some instances where you could have said, okay, well, it was above the last bearish day. Depends what you call a, a bearish day, right? Uh, and so there is some qualification that, that does need to be given there. Uh, you, you know, a lot of times when you get a strong trend, Aussie Kiwi is not a great example. Uh, this is one that you know, knowing your currency pair, I you know if you if you took your if you took your profits as you went along and as you got them, then that would by all means be fine, uh, because it's it's a very like choppy uh, currency. Uh, now looking at something like dollar yen, you know dollar yen is a little different. Um, see now here's an instance where you know you would have gotten stopped out if you would say you were like okay you know what down here is, is some support, you would have gotten stopped out right here, right? You would have missed this big, huge down move, but using this, you would have gotten stopped out because you did have a bearish day, then you did have a close above its high. So like everything, it's not perfect. Uh, but there are times when, you know, you can really catch on to a move uh, by using it because, you know, you'll get one of those really extended uh, trades. And again, when do you use it? You know, I think that in this environment, um, like here, no question, I would have missed this down move, right? No question. Because I, I, I don't trust the way that it's trading, right? I don't trust the way that the market environment is, is very, uh, so I would end up missing that huge flash crash on that. Um, so that would have been, you know, that would have been problematic. Uh, but not really, you know, because in the long run, you know, if you just consistently stick to the rules, then, you know, you're going to, your results will be consistent. Yes, you're going to miss some, but then you're also going to, you know, you're going to win some. Uh, so that's, you know, just kind of the nature of the beast. Now, I don't always use a trailing stop, right? I don't always use a trailing stop. Sometimes I just get out when it, it finally reaches like my maximum target. So again, uh, it's, it's not, it's, it, it's not perfect. Uh, but I have found that really good trends tend to, to, to unfold that way where they don't, you know, have those strong moves against you, strong counter trend moves. And again, it's, it's one of those things you use that, like once you've reached a maximum target, you know, that's where you start to implement it. You know, it's not something that you, as soon as you get in, you say, Oh, the next day it closed above. No, no, no. you gotta, you gotta at least let the trade kind of work its way out. We haven't even point where the market's extended right and that's where it keeps you you know in a situation where the market gets really extended 
uh, it can keep you in an, an extended move that becomes much more extended, right? Oversold becomes much more oversold. If you just get it, if you do that right when you get into the trade, you know, chances are you're not getting into a trade that's already overbought or oversold. So, you know, it, again, I can go into a whole, uh, a whole webinar on that probably. Maybe we'll do that sometimes. Um, So yeah, Al. the 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 idea is to is to short the pullback, like after it again, as we were talking about before. After you get the, if it's a if it's a bullish uh, trend, then I'd wait for uh, you know an, an up, uh, you know after it's pulled back, had some down days, I'd wait for a, a strong up day, um, vice versa on the shorts. That way, you know the momentum of the down of the pullback has actually has it's shown some signs of stopping. You know, because that's where you, know, you get into a pullback. A pullback can become a reversal, right? And that's, you know, that's where, uh, you know, for example, let's say that you were, let's say that you were buying, let's say that you were looking at this and you're like, oh, you know what, gold's pulling back. It's in an uptrend. Uh, it didn't really hit any support yet. It's in an up, and then it continues to pull back. And now I hit some support. You actually, you actually could have gotten in on that support level there. Uh, and it would have been fine. Now I thought that this one was like a much better one, uh, and it, but like it actually hit support and bounced, right? It actually hit support and bounced. Whereas over here you don't have any support. It is pulling back, so it's kind of like, well, where do you where do you get in, right? Where do you get in on this one? Uh, and then you have a little up day. It's not really you know anything big. In fact, it was you know considered kind of an inside day after a down day, which wouldn't really be a if, if anything, it could mean that we're going to go lower um, after having a small little bounce. And you know, you you could you could have taken you know this one. Um, this is a much more convincing up day after hitting you know trend line and hitting that support. So you know that's where you're just waiting for those types of things. Uh, the euro right now, as we're seeing, uh, the euro. Well, I'm going to have to already change my my analyst because one of the scenarios was that it pops through the upside of this, uh, but it, we have a trend line here, right? So with this, you know, generally being uh, a weak tape, having this lower, uh, you know, moving, it's generally moving lower, right? The up moves are, are being sold. Uh, if we get a reversal off of this trend line, and then a drop back through the bottom of the pattern, right? So it 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 it, it, it acknowledges resistance and then it breaks support. Uh, this is you know a scenario that I'm looking at. Um, I think buying this is going to be really tough. And again, rule of thumb that I said earlier, what am I not going to do? Even though it's breaking this wedge pattern to the upside, I'm not going to buy into resistance, right? It could go like this, and for all I care, it could do that, right? It could go just like this, and if I miss it. So be it, because uh, I'm not going to buy this resistance level, uh, especially especially in the euro, the way it's trading these days. Um, but if it hits this resistance and then turns down, you know, and breaks support, then I would get in, right? And and this could be considered a pullback trade. So I'm I'm waiting for momentum to to exhaust itself. You know, looking at the daily, it's you know you look at it, it's it's running up into a resistance area. Uh, via this trend line and so now we'll wait for it to reverse off of there so we haven't gotten up there yet right so it hasn't hit a level that that uh, uh to sell this particular rally yet um let's see here what was i gonna so you got to set stops right you want to set them beyond the recent swing high uh or low what do i mean by that you know, it's a good idea to do this, right? It's a good idea to say, let's just say that we get, let's just say that we had a long trade down here, right? And we got long the euro on this reversal, you know, based on this reversal, you know, I would want to put my stop below uh, the low of this. I wouldn't want to just put it like right here. You know, you put it right there, you, know, you would have gotten stopped out. If I put it right here, you would have gotten, you know, this time you would have escaped, but the next time we could get a pullback and then go. Uh, the most logical spot would have been underneath the low because that's the most recent form of support. 
right? So it's a good idea to place your stops above and below uh, swing lows. You know, it it could be it could be a Fibonacci level too, or something. I don't know. It could be some other resistance. Uh, idea to put it beyond those levels because those levels can get tested. And it's also a good idea to set your limits ahead of. Uh, if you're going to put a limit order out there, right? You're not in front of your screen. You're going to leave it out there. You know, it's always a good idea to say, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put my order in before that level, right? Uh, so that way it ensures that it gets taken out and, and then once it gets taken out then you can use a trailing stop right so for example I mean euro is just such a terrible like thing to, to look at right now uh, as let's just say that you know you were like uh, you know I'm trying to think of one right at this this moment uh, let's just say you were short right here I'm just gonna use a let's say you were short and I'm not really you were short and you have this trend line coming up. Uh, you have it coming up, but like you're not, you know, you don't want it to, you know, and, and to do this, right? You don't want it to hit it and bounce. You want to get out of the trade uh, beforehand. So you would set it, you know, above, right? You'd say, okay, if I'm not going to be around to watch this thing, I'm at least going to, you know, put it in, uh, you know, above that level. Uh, let's say that you were, uh, Oh, that's my that's my secret chart right there. I'll have to, that not that one actually. It's that's not it. It's uh, I don't have all the stocks in there, but I've got a uh, top ten hedge fund holding uh, index. I'll show that to you guys uh, one of these days here soon. Um, I'm losing my train of thought. I hit the wrong key. Anyways, uh, you wanna you wanna get out ahead of levels, right? You don't wanna you don't wanna be the one that like waits. For something to uh, to get right to a level, and then you know, like here's a good example. We had a lot of resistance over here, and we had a strong rally, and we came within, you know, basically the the level started around it was a little over 1300, came to 1298, right? So it, it didn't actually quite reach it back. Now it did eventually reach it a few weeks later, uh, but it you didn't quite get there, you know, so. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to try to. You know, to me, it's it's better to to give up a, a couple of bucks uh, than to uh, than to run the risk of of having something reverse ahead of support or ahead of resistance. So it's a good idea to always uh, put your limits above or below, you know, depending on you know long or short your identified support and resistance. Right, so that's that's something to be mindful of. If you've got a big retracement level, you know the 50% retracement, you you want to put it a little bit before that, right? If that's where you're looking to get out, if that's your target. I'm not saying to do that if it uh, because of the level. I'm saying if that's your target, you're like, okay, I'm going to hold till that point. You know, you want to put it and make sure that you know it doesn't stop just before it and reverse on you. That's a it's a terrible thing uh, when you come like 95% of the way to a trade. All of a sudden, it reverses on you, right? It's it's a it's a terrible thing. So uh, make sure to do that. So again, here's some sample formulas, examples. You know, using just some of the some of what we talked about. I actually meant to talk about that euro uh, trade. You got the downtrend, broadly speaking, at the downtrend, a corrective wedge. If you get a bearish break or a head fake, then break. That's the head fake we're starting to get right now, which is that. Which is that break higher, uh, right? And that that was one of the scenarios. Was again, you know, using the the scenario as part of my as part of how I operate. Uh, one of the scenarios was break here, then we sell off. If we break, have a head fake, hit this, and then reverse back through, get short, and but not by by resistance, right? So uh, this is number two. Was actually I meant to show you the euro then. Uh, right now we're getting the head fake. So you, you see how there's some flexibility in here. So I'm kind of glad this is actually happening as well because I wanted to show you, right, I have the bearish break in there, but I also, or, or. So I didn't get in on the bearish break because there wasn't one. So now we're in the or category right now. We're in the or category. So I have a contingency plan for how this thing could play out. And there's likely to be sufficient risk reward based on, you know, unless it like, 
drops 200 points, then I'm not going to get in. Uh, but you know, you can see here there's some different scenarios, uh, different examples, different combinations. You know, again, it, I could go on for like pages and, and literally infinitely uh, with all the different scenarios that you could have. But they all have some kind of like component that you know entails one of these for the most part, right? So that's that's really uh, you know kind of the gist of the whole webinar is I wanted to get you guys thinking and and those. And, and those kind of conventions, it's like, okay, we've got to look at the trend. What's the trend doing? Okay, where's the levels based on what I like for support and resistance? What's the what's my entry signal? What's going to get me in? You know, what's my risk management on this? Do I have a good risk reward trade brewing, or or is this just you know, is there a lot of noise and it's not going to maybe give me a lot of good opportunity? Like the euro is it's just you know, you got to be super selective, right? But other things, you know, recently we had a lot of volatility in the in, in the futures. Uh, in the indices, and uh, they were, you know, you could be a little less selective because there was so much volatility and opportunity. So, uh, yeah, so that's, a, you know, exactly that. Basically, the strategy is your trading plan plus a checklist all together. Yeah, you know, it's just like checking off those boxes. What's a good trade? And again, remember to use the things that the antis of the things that make up your strategy to keep you out of bad situation so you may have you may have uh, one component you may have conflicting components that happens oftentimes so you say to yourself I have conflicting components well then I'm not gonna do something there right like if I have conflicting components then I'm then I'm not gonna do anything so that's that's another you know again key, I can't stress it enough uh, avoiding avoiding bad trades is is a winning trade so if you can avoid losers by sticking to a set of rules, then you know you've sidestepped. You've taken yourself one step closer to a profitable situation, right? Without having to experience the pain of a losing one that was, in not in hindsight, but ahead of time, avoidable. And sometimes those, you know, you would have taken those and they would have worked. But you know, over the long run, probability is not on your side when you take that approach where you just do this, do that, and. You're better off to stick to some some rules, some, some rule of thumbs, and, and operate around those with a little bit of, kind of like a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, uh, you have a framework and then operate within that framework. All right, guys, I'm, I've been talking for an hour and 15 minutes almost. Most people in my family would say that that's not a very long time for me to talk. Uh, but I am actually running out of my voice uh, by talking nonstop. Okay, so I'm jumping off the mic. I hope you guys found this, uh, you know, helpful. I hope this helps uh, again shape, you know, the direction. That's that's the biggest thing. Help give you guys some direction. Uh, this is being this is being recorded, so uh, this will be on the. Uh, it will be under my author name. So it'll be under my author name, and I'm also going to put it into that that sheet of uh, with all the other webinars. Uh, so that link that I gave you guys earlier, and I'll give it to you guys again, although it's sitting right there. It's not like I you have to scroll very far, but here you go. Uh, it'll be in there uh, at some point soon. And, and again, a lot of the stuff we talked about today, you want to get into more specifics, there's webinars in there that cover some of the, the, the more nitty gritty of this because we could go on for hours with this. All right, you guys have a good one. Um, if you have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, etc., feel free to contact me. If you have ideas for upcoming webinars, I'm always uh, open to suggestions. Tomorrow, 10 GMT time, we'll be looking at the charts uh, for next week. Have a good one.